Hey everyone, welcome back. This is uh, Joe Vincent for part two of inking this wonderful uh, Voodoo Grifter pinup done by uh, Jim Lee for the cover of Wizard Magazine back in 2006. Um, I'm going to try to keep this video down to 10 to 15 minutes. The last one went over a half an hour and um, I know that's just really too long for most people to probably even want to watch so uh, I'm going to try to keep this one down but real quick I want to hit um, some things that I did since the last video the first video uh, spotted the blacks here filled them in there worked on the the wrist and up into the hand and I did the one hand and then I left this hand and this arm for this tutorial so uh, I got a stopwatch going so um, I'm, I'm kind of pressuring myself to keep these videos uh, short and sweet so uh, let's get to it uh, the first thing let's see here all right uh, once again uh, you know I use clip, clip studio paint uh, or manga studio as it was formerly known uh, I think it's a lot easier to use in Photoshop um, it was designed for the sole purpose of being used for comics and um, you know manga and art um, where Photoshop originally wasn't um, so I think it has a lot of features and I think it's uh, a lot more user friendly than Photoshop um, what I use the ink I use a uh, right now I'm using a Wacom uh, 13 inch HD I think uh, tablet um, before this I had a uh, 12 inch Cintiq um, before that I had a I think an Intuos um, 2 <laughs> or one of them uh, one of the early ones uh, which I had for like a, a really long time like I think when they first came out I had it and I, I just I kept it and then I I after doing research at the time I went and decided I, I wanted to go Cintiq because everybody was raving about how great it was to work right on the picture and not have to sit there and look up at at uh you know your monitor to see what you were doing um, and it does it does make a huge difference um, when it comes to time um, and you know when you're a professional if you get to the level of being a professional time is time is money right so uh, the faster you can do things and and uh, get stuff out to you know your publisher or whoever uh, the more money you make so I mean it seems like a no-brainer that you know a lot of people push for the Cintiq and picked up the Cintiq and went went that direction um, the biggest thing I have problems with when it comes to Cintiqs is the same problem I kind of have when it comes to Photoshop is that it's not really readily available to everyone um, Especially when it, you look at like the price of these items is you know they're they're expensive um, I mean um, I think I paid just under a thousand dollars for the Cintiq and you know that's kind of crazy especially when you sit there and go and, and you're not even you're not even a professional you know, you're not even really working professionally. You know, you, you dropped all that money. Yeah, you know, um, you know, but I went with, you know, what was what was um, available at the time. You know, it's just, um, you know, I I went with what I felt comfortable with. Um, since having a Cintiq, though, you know, I've also done research with on a lot of different. Um, tablets and that's the thing is right now there's 
all these tablets are coming out from other companies and um, I mean even Dell now I think that I saw the ad for Dell is releasing a huge like 22 or 29 inch um, surface to draw on that would be equivalent to what um, Wacom offers through the Cintiq and uh, but like at I think I want to say you know like five or six hundred dollars less if not more and uh, I think that's great that's what we need we need in this industry and in, you know just like any industry it's like you need competition you can't have companies who just sit there and get to monopolize um, the industry and we saw for a really long time in the comic industry that there were companies that just sat there and monopolized everything and there was companies like Adobe and it was companies like Wacom who just they had the market and there was just nobody can compete with them you know they they had good products I, I definitely agree with that you know but they also had um, time in business and you know they had their foot in the door and they had their foundations already set and and it was just really hard for for other companies to come in and to compete you know even though they had good products you know at cheaper prices it was just you know it was hard to compete you know when everybody wanted everybody wants Adobe or everybody wants Wacom and uh, now you're we're seeing that like people are making the switch because they don't want to pay the money they don't have the money to pay and I think that's great um, you know and it only benefits the new the next generation of artists that are coming up you know who want to get into the business um, you know like that's why I went to uh, Clip Studio Paint I, for a long time I used um, Adobe Photoshop like everybody else did uh, because that was the standard there was not and you know there was nothing really else out there that compared and then you know I, I, I took a shot with Manga Studio and I and I instantly fell in love with it it was so much better than using uh, Photoshop or Illustrator to ink and um, it was uh, basic enough to where it was very easy to understand I don't think there was a really there's a very high learning curve at least with the first uh, few um, Manga Studios or Clip Studio Paint, whatever you want to call it now, um, compared to you know uh, Photoshop, and then now you know you also have like all these artists are doing all checking out all these other products like uh, you know the big push now I see for everybody is. Um, the iPad Pro, you know, and a lot of artists are, are using the iPad Pro for mobile solutions when it comes to the, while they're traveling, you know, because a lot of professional artists travel, you know, they go and do conventions all over the world, and you know, you, you know, are you gonna really lug, uh, you know, your your home computer around, or do you really want to uh, necessarily travel with a you know, a four thousand dollar piece of equipment or whatever, like um, you know, a um, Cinti companion. It's like no, you're gonna you want something very portable, very light, less expensive, just in case something happens. You know, easy to use, and we're seeing that. You know, if it's Apple and it's um, the software is Procreate, and I think that's great. Um, that's wonderful because I think it's going to open the door for you know a lot of people and then um, when it comes to what you're working at with home at home it's like um, you know there's a lot of artists now who are doing things digital and um, and they're not dropping the big money that Cintiq wants them to drop they're they're getting alternatives um, I know like everybody jumped on board with the Cintiq Companion and I was like oh well you know I'll get something that you know if I'm tra traveling around out or you know maybe I'm at work and um, 
you know, I want to kind of goof around on my lunch break or whatever. What can I goof around with? And, um, you know, I did um, a Microsoft Surface Pro and, um, you know, which I bought like an older generation. Uh, you know, I didn't want to buy it new because I was just like, well, I don't know if I'm going to like it or not. But, you know, I thought it was a great tool, a great uh, tool for, you know, um, you know, it, it run, it ran uh, Photoshop very well. It ran um, Manga Studio or Clip Studio Paint very well, and uh, you know, it was a lot cheaper. And and that's the thing is like, uh, you know, not everybody can afford to keep up with all the new toys. So, you know, you just you gotta look for the deals. You gotta shop around. Don't just go for the for the brand name. You know. Look, look around, see what, what, you know, can work for you and, um, you know, without a big, huge price tag. I think that's very important, especially when you're just starting, you know, and you're not, you know, that big name. You're not Jim Lee, you know, you're not, uh, you know, J. Scott Campbell or, or, you know, Scott, Scotty Young or any of the names that are, are, are big now. Uh, you know, so it's like, why pay those prices if we don't have to? Just trying to get this done here really quick. It's really hard to put <laughs> like a time limit on myself, but I don't want these videos to go really long. I don't want them to be sped up because I think sometimes when you speed things up, you just you tend to miss things. And I'm really trying to keep this under 15, 15 minutes. I have a feeling I'm going to go a little bit over, but hopefully I won't go over you know, 30 to over 30 minutes. Um, that was a little too much. I, I ramble too much. Um, and I know I do, and I'm trying to fix that, but oh well. Here we are, right? Yeah. Uh, I need to tighten up these lines, thicken them out, I think. Uh, this looks a little confusing to me, but. Uh, well, you see, I'm not even really going too much by Jim Lee's, Jim Lee's lines here for this stuff, the mesh. Um, as long as it looks like the mesh, you know, it's like, um, I don't think you have to sit there and be like, oh, it has to be exactly like Jim Lee's mesh. Um, you know, and I don't think Jim Lee would expect you to sit there and be like, oh, yeah, you know, that mesh. You know, he did it differently than I had. You know, they just wanted to look good, you know, and go with the costume, you know. Now, if I sat here and just said, well, you know, the hell with the mesh, I don't want to do it, that would be something else, but I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, for the sake of time, I'm not going to sit there and worry too much about making it exact, um, exactly like what he did, so, uh, but. Oh, I'll tell you what, man. Fifteen minutes goes by fast. <laughs> it's like, dang, I wish I was faster. Uh, I feel like I'm cruising because I'm pushing myself to do things faster now. But okay, let's zoom out. I think you you got it. Yeah. So all we have to do is do the fills. All right, guys. So that's this video. Um, coming in just around the fifteen minute mark. Um, I'm going to go in, spot the blacks, fill in the blacks. Uh, I'm going to do some stuff a little bit with some white just to pop these little areas here. If you notice, like it looks like he has like some stitching done there that, you know, is in the black. So what I'm going to do is I'll pop that with with some white ink and that's what you'll, oh crap, totally forgot to get this cross hatching down here. Hold on. All right, I'm going over 15 minutes. <laughs> Just, just so I can say I did all the cross hatching at least. Yeah. But, um, and then 
I'll come back and I'll figure out what I'm going to do next and then I'll come back and we'll do another video with with focusing on that. Um, Alright, so now we can kind of call this done for right now. And uh, like I said, I'll go back and I'll fix up. Um, spot put some whites in and stuff, spot the black and I'll show you that when I come back with the next video. Alright, thanks everybody for tuning in. Sorry we went a little bit over 15 minutes, uh, but a lot shorter than about 34 of the last video. So everyone take care. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, uh, when I when it does get posted, please share. Um, I, I would like to see more people seeing these videos. I mean, not saying that I'm like the ultimate helper when it comes to to inking, but um, you know, there might be something that I know that someone doesn't know that will help them out. So that's the whole purpose of doing these videos. Thank you, and hope everyone has a great day. Take care.